and welcome to this session of the Ezra UK box set, where I, Rosie Gardner, will be exploring how Arches Experience Builder can bring your apps to life. Seamlessly share your maps, apps and more to collaborate with colleagues, other organisations and the public in an informed and engaging way. In the communities where we live and work, we strive to optimise services, improve safety and protect our environment. It's through coordination of efforts that we can bring about change that benefits all. Communication is an important component of any project we deliver. Whether you want to share latest information with internal staff or present your message effectively to external stakeholders. Motivated by common goals and initiatives, ArcGIS enables you to get the most out of our advanced systems by building your own apps that fit your specific purposes and have easy to use and intuitive designs. This session's focus shall be on ArcGIS Experience Builder, our new way to build apps. We will take a look at six easy steps to help you get started before finishing with some inspiring real life examples. To get started, you can sign into Experience Builder and when you're logged in, you'll get a page that looks something like this. And you can simply hit Create New to start. There's a wide range of designs to choose from to start building your app, or you can begin from scratch using a blank template such as these. In the interest of time, I've already begun an app and this one is using the black full screen template with some rows and columns that I've already laid out. So in the builder, you can zoom out to see the full extent of the window. And then I'd recommend that you start by setting the theme. So in this demo, we'll be building an app to inform visitors about car parking in the Lake District National Park. We can choose a preset theme, so in this case, the violet theme, to coordinate with the park's branding. But you could also go in and customise hex codes to fit with specific corporate colours if required. The third step in the process is bringing in the data, which will drive the app and make it informative as well as engaging through dynamic visualisations. Similar to the rest of the ArcGIS system, you can go and add data from your portal, pulling from organisation or groups, as well as from URLs too. So during the summer season, having one app with the public can view live updates, but also submit feedback at the same time will be a powerful feed of information. So let's create an app that facilitates this. So with my map selected, which sets the data source, I can move to the next step of the design process, adding elements to the page through the insert button. There's an extensive list of widgets to choose from, but I'd always recommend that you start by setting the layout first, particularly if you're going from a blank canvas. This makes it much easier to keep the widgets neat and aligned. So here I've got three columns and I've also then got this row at the top. Bringing in a few of the widgets I've already configured, you can start to see that the app will take shape. So I can simply drag and drop from this pending view, which allows me to play with the layout without losing any of the configuration of the widgets saved there. I can then also add from the other menu. So in this case, I wanna add some text. So I can drag a text box across right click and paste some text in and I can then drag and resize to make sure it's all visible. Similarly, I can go and select an image so I can drop that in place and set the image source. It can be uploaded from a local space or I can reference a URL if I prefer. So with those set, I now want to incorporate a map into my view so I can select the map widget and then drag it across and it'll ask me which map to use. Now I've only got one defined in my data menu, so I can go in and hit select. I can then go and toggle some of the tools at the bottom, as well as set an action, which we'll come back to shortly. So with my map window in place, I want to, a way for my user to quickly filter down to an area of interest, so I can go in and pull across some filters. Now in here, I've got a list of lots of different areas which can be filtered against and they're already set up, but I'll show you how I did this. So I'm adding a new filter. I can select the data source, which is defined from my map. And then with that set, I can go in and set an expression. So there's no code required. It's just a case of simply selecting the field that I wish to filter by, and then the particular value. In this case, I want it for Kendall. 
Hitting OK, I can finish by setting a label which will be the text that appears in the list. I now have a filter that will appear at the bottom of my list and will allow me to filter to car parks around Kendall. Another great widget to use is the list view. So I'll show you a little more detail as to how this works too. So first you select a template as the style of the card. And then when you hit OK, you can start modifying this so it works exactly how you like. So I can delete various elements and I can also edit the text. But I want this text to be dynamic so I can go in and connect it to my data and select it from what is defined by the map. And then once I've done that, you'll notice a little dynamic content button will appear. I'll now go in and select any fields that I want to appear in that list view. So for instance, the name of the car park and the location where it's based. This also applies for the image too. So I can go connect my data again and select that data layer. And then switching to my image source to dynamic, this allows me to select the field that is defining the image, which in this case contains a URL. So when you launch the app and it is live, each card will update to show information in this case about the car park. So there's a few other settings which you can set and play with. So I'm going to delete this one and then in the interest of time, pull across the fully configured version from my pending view. So with that in place, I can now go back to my map and I can configure those actions that we looked at earlier. So when I change the extent on the map, this will allow me to filter the other components accordingly. So when I select the data source, and this will link the other elements together so that when I go to the live view and pan and zoom into an area down here, you see that the list view at the bottom is automatically updating according to the extent of the map. So the final feature of this app is to provide the public with a method to give feedback based on their experiences when they are out and about. There are a number of ways we can do this. One way is you can go in and select a survey using the inbuilt survey widget. Or you could embed an application, so this could be any other apps that are available in the Arches system, such as dashboards, or in this case, I'm going to embed a survey one, two, three that I've already created. The reason I'm doing it this way around rather than using the inbuilt survey option is because this method allows me to update existing records rather than submit new features to the map. So to do this, I can go into the content, I can input a custom URL, which allows the app to understand the information associated with a feature that's been selected. And when I connect the data, I can get the app to look up details against a unique ID. So in this case, I can set it to be the global ID. So with that set up, I can now go into the live view. And if I zoom to a car park and then select it, you'll notice that the form will reload and it will auto populate certain fields for me. This makes it a quick task to do and removes errors in submission. All I have to do as a user is simply update the appropriate fields and then hit submit. You'll see edits are then committed to the map within seconds, providing a real-time view of the use whilst also building a useful archive of service usage, which can inform future developments and decision-making in the national park. So before the final step of sharing your app with others, consider how it will be viewed. In this case, most people will be out and about on much smaller screens, so incorporating a responsive design will be beneficial to all. Modifying the views independently, you can nest elements together into sections, and this means you don't lose the functionality, but you can have it on the screens even down to the size of a mobile phone. So there you have it. In a short space of time, Experience Builder allows you to spin up powerful resources with lots of flexibility over the content and design. We've explored one way to use Experience Builder to create an intuitive site for crowdsourcing information, but there are infinite ways to use the widgets and styles. S3's App Gallery is a great place to see how others have used the same builder. In the UK, 
Homes England have created an interactive map that cleverly incorporates a wealth of information about developments and presents it in a concise way. Jumping to the Environment Agency's site, their multi-page approach creates a navigable site with a one-stop shop for details on the work they carry out, as well as access to data and KPIs on their capture program. But maybe you already have a site and you want to amalgamate your data with it. That's exactly what the Rivers Trust have done here. Taking the theme of their organisation website, their embedded app blends in for a seamless experience across the page. Experience Builder isn't the only way for you to connect with others using ArcGIS. Two other apps particularly suited to reaching wide audiences are Story Maps and Hub. Each have their unique capabilities. Story Maps are quick and simple, driven by narrative. Experience Builder gives you more flexibility over design, and Hub brings it all together, exposing data, referencing your curated apps, and portraying your own story to both internal and external stakeholders. I'd recommend checking out some of the other videos in this box set to explore these other apps in more detail. So there you go, a whistle-stop tour of Experience Builder. Check out the resource pages for more ideas of how Experience Builder can be the tool for you. Have a play, give a tutorial a go, and I hope you enjoy building apps unique to you.